Welcome to Tax Insights, presented by Hawkins Ash CPAs. And good morning, listeners. Welcome back to Tax Insights here on WOMT. Each week with Hawkins Ash. Last week we had Charlie on, and we're going to have Charlie on again today. Uh, Jeff is taking a little break. Charlie, good morning, sir. Good morning, Terry. How are you today? Fantastic. How about yourself? I can't complain, my friend. Today, we're continuing our discussion on uh, the R&D tax credit, the research and development. And I guess today, I want to focus on what is research? Yeah, previously, we had talked about the benefits of the R&D tax credit and how it's one of the most substantial incentives under U.S. tax law and that many different types of businesses will qualify to be able to take the credit. Uh, and Right now, I'd kind of like to go more in depth to some of the aspects of the, the research and development tax credit, including what is considered research by the IRS. So again, you know, remind us all, you know, what exactly is research that we're talking about? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, when the re- word research is brought up, most people immediately think of people wearing white lab coats with breakers and Petri dishes. <laughs> the, IR- the IRS has a different way of thinking about what research is, which boils down to creating or producing something that is new to the taxpayer. So there has to be a catch here, or everyone would be claiming that things are new to them, and this is all research. Yeah, you're absolutely correct on that. Uh, It's why the IRS came up with a four-part test that needs to be passed in order for the research to be considered qualified for the credit. All right, so what are those four parts to this test? The four parts are the four parts of the research that needs to be, it needs to be for a permitted purpose. There has to be a process of experimentation. There needs to be an elimination of uncertainty, and the research needs to be technical in nature. So that sounds easy enough, but maybe you should expand a bit more uh, on those areas. Yeah, yeah, I would love to, and I'll touch on each one individually here. Uh, let us start with uh, the research that needs to be for a permitted purpose. This means that the taxpayer must intend to apply the information being discovered to develop a new or improved business component, eliminate supply costs, or eliminate labor costs. Uh, just for a little expansion on the the business component is any product process computer software technique formula or invention which is to be held for sale lease or used in a trader business for the taxpayer an example of this might be a door manufacturer who makes fire resistant doors their current doors are good at holding back a fire for something like 15 minutes but they think if they change the mix of materials in the door they could hold it back a fire for you know 20 minutes or so uh, Next, um, the research needs to have a process process of experimentation. That is a process designed to evaluate one or more alternatives to achieve a result where the capability or method of achieving that result or the appropriate design of that result is uncertain at the, as of the beginning of the taxpayer's research activities. Really what you're looking for here is something along the lines of like prototypes, models, or trial and error that look at different designs, processes, or materials. Uh, that third test that we talked to that about that needs to be passed is there needs to be an elimination of uncertainty. This boils down to having a chance of failure on the outset, discovering information to eliminate it, and trying to figure out alternative solutions. Most often where we see this is, is businesses know they can do something, but they're not as sure exactly how to get it done. And the final test is the activity needs to be technical in nature. This means discovering information that fundamentally re- relies on the principles of hard sciences, such as physical, biological, computer science, and rules out uh, soft sciences like marketing, accounting, and business administrative activities. So unfortunately for us accountants, there's nothing that we yeah. can take as R&D credit. <laughs> so are there any other exclusions other than, as you said, soft sciences? Yeah, there, there's a few other ones that kind of get into specific exclusions that are associated expenses that can't be used to, to claim the credit. These include research that is done outside the U.S., um, funded research, and an ad- adaptation of existing business component. Funded research is the research where the taxpayer doesn't retain the, the rights to the results of the research or someone else is contractually obligated to pay for the research even if the activities fail to produce the desired results. Adaptation of existing business product means that you can't just take something, like shrink it three inches and call it research if the product doesn't change at all. 
However, if you shrink the same object uh, three inches and it changes the structural integrity, that could still qualify. A lot of great information here, Charlie, on the show. Time is running up here. I know next week we want to talk about uh, how to quantify qualified research and the calculation of the credit, but that's for next week. In the meantime, for those listeners that need to connect with the team at Hawkins Ash, how do they do that? Uh, you can find us on hawkinsashcpas.com, follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook. This has been Tax Insights, presented by Hawkins Ash CPAs. Learn more online at hawkinsashcpas.com. Hawkins Ash CPAs, part of your business, part of your life.